Before we get going into your Hockey IQ podcast episode, I want to thank our sponsor, Rapid Shot. Rapid Shot is the smart shooting lane. Uh, it's like a batting cage for hockey players. Very cool. Tracks your shot in three ways. Accuracy, shot speed, and reaction time. Uh, easy to use. Uh, actually, I used it when I played and was growing up. Very easy. Simply scan your phone in, select your settings, and start shooting. Uh, you can see your stats on the app and online. And you can check them out at rapidshot.com. Uh, great small business. I actually grew up with one of the owner's sons and have played with all the family members by now. Uh, just in local pickups here in Ohio. Very cool local business. Awesome product. I love it. I know quite a few NHLers have them in their homes. Uh, a lot of D1 programs have it at their rinks. So you have to check this out. Rapidshot.com. Check it out. Rapidshot, thank you so much for sponsoring our podcast. On the Hockey IQ podcast today, we bring on two special men uh, from Denmark, Nicholas Hart and Nikolai Kieland. Uh, both are actually currently in Ohio, the greatest place on earth in my book. Uh, obviously, you guys have come over to North America. So welcome, guys. Excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, it was an interesting time. I actually learned about you guys from a subscriber and listener to the podcast and newsletter. So you and I ended up connecting and it mm. was like, okay, well, we're coming over in less than a month. So it was absolutely funny timing. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe, maybe explain what you're doing here. Yeah, well, just to introduce myself, my name is Niklas Hart, um, and I've been playing hockey since I can't remember. Started as three years old, played professional in 16 years, uh, quit playing three seasons ago, and uh, then we started raw. So, uh, yeah. Nikolai's well, got a longer story. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been struggling all night. I haven't slept all night to like boil it down. So I'm 48, turning 49 in April, years old. Uh, I moved from Denmark in 2003 to India because I was uh, deep, deeply delved in, delved into uh, martial art and jitsu, and uh, I needed to get closer to Japan, where, where which is the hub of that. So I've done martial arts for like 18 years. Uh, before that, kickboxing, street fighting, and, and karate, and then a six-year stint in, in, in semi-pro uh, skateboarding. But that was back in the day when uh, Tony Hawk wasn't the best. So um, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur um, and um, also pretty, pretty, how to say it, uh, I've trained yoga for many, many, many years in India. Um, and uh, now I work with hockey in, by, by accident, uh, was introduced to, to Nicholas through his father. And um, we, we now work with, um, with the young hockey players from Scandinavia, mainly. Um, and that brings us to, to Columbus, where we have three athletes um, on the uh, pre-tryout camp with the AAA OBJ. Uh, testing themselves against the best over here. Exactly. Columbus, heart of hockey, best place. You got it. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned that you, you met Nicholas through his father. So Nicholas, you know, how did it come about that you were seeking someone like Nikolai and why was he like the right fit uh, for you as you were later in your career? You mentioned you had some knee problems that you're working through. Uh, I should love to hear more. Yeah, well, like you said, I had many knee pro problems during my career and I was having the same output every time. You know, I did the rehab, I came back, I played well again, and then it kind of happened continuously. And and one day it's like, if I, if I do the same, I get the same results, right? And then I met Nikolai through my father and kind of opened my perspective in terms of what to be doing every day in, in practice and 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 I wondered what I, what have I been doing in my 16 years as a pro, you know? And I started to see there was many other things that I could do to to prevent prevent these things. And um, yeah, physically, but but most mentally in terms of 
looking looking elsewhere and and Nikolai was a big factor in 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 open my mind and you know help me help me um, to be better physically I saw a progression and and just in, enjoying life more uh, as we worked uh, more and more yeah so that was the biggest thing like start to to I mean I think hockey players are very narrow uh, in 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 ways of thinking and and just do things they get told every day so so when I started to maybe think a little bit of of my own and and start to to work, work out in another way um, um, I, it helped me a lot well two things I want to dig out of there let's start with just enjoying life more like why were you enjoying life more well I think like I said I mean I cannot talk to for anyone else than myself but it, it gets pretty, uh, like I said, narrowed down in, in ways of thinking and doing the same stuff every day. And, you know, if if you're not thinking of what you actually are doing, you're just doing it, it will get it will get the same and boring over time. So so when I started to nerd it a little bit and, and see, like, learn my, uh, the, my body uh, better and start to, to work on, on other things like small muscles for example um because hockey players we have very very big muscles and you know we we were very big and in terms of my injuries with with the knees the small muscles and the joints i start to nerd that i start to to train that it, it helped me feel better in my body and therefore in 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 the mental uh, mental part as well but if i may interject uh, greg just quickly i mean we all talk about fundamentals right uh, but in martial art, where, where it gets really painful very quickly. And, and kind of the, the purpose of martial art is to create peaceful human beings through understanding what pain is, like what danger is, what, what it means to kill is the reason you don't do it. So, so that, that is what we train. So, but we have this thing called yeah, fundamentals with emphasis on fun. Through fun, because it's not fun. <laughs> you need to create an environment that is fun to be in, at least when, when you enter and when you say, see you next time. So the middle of it, that's a different story. But that is like, you, you emphasize the fun and through that, a fun environment, a fun, let's say, a, you know, a happy envi environment uh, with, with, with good energy, good vibe, good feelings. Uh, you actually allow the mental aspect, the mind, to relax. And therefore, you can seek the discomfort of the development zone. Okay, so, 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 so it has to be fun. So when we started strength training together, and I'm like high-fiving, let's go, man, and Rocky uh, fall music soundtrack, and, you know, <laughs> Top Gun theme, and he was like, what the, what is going on I was here? very serious. He was like, <laughs> no, no, it has to be... What, is, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. <laughs> I, I was very uncomfortable. Yeah. I was very But that's, that's, that's the, that's, that was the weak spot I identified immediately. Like within seconds that, okay, this guy's too serious. That, that, that is part of the injury because he's been told, now you have a weak knee, right? So, so then that means the injury also, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I really believe how to say in English the the narrative. Yeah, the narrative. Uh, you know that you know I have now been injured a lot, and I told myself that I have to take uh, you know uh, precautions and stuff like that, and and it it really stuck to my mind. I wasn't free in the way of of moving. I would say exactly. So so that was the first thing we had to sort of unhinge was this narrative of I am injured and my weak uh, my knee is weak. So if you if you skate around with that and then you get the uh, that metal thing, the forest gum thing on the knee, the donjo, the donjo. Mm -hmm. Well, then at the same time you have to be hard, fast, explosive, but you have a weak knee. Like if you would consider building a house like that, would you live in it? No. If you if you're told that your car is you have an awesome engine but you have a weak, uh, you know. Uh, on the carriage, would you drive in it? No. So why would you actually live in a body 
like that. So, 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 so that was the first thing to actually strengthen, of course, strengthen the knee, but, but how, like with the, with the, with, it's like, uh, you know, it's like strands of muscle fiber. They're kind of like long silky hair, um, the muscle fibers around the joints. And we train them a lot in martial art because the locks, the breaks, the, 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 this shoulder dislocation and stuff like that. So to not get that and to be able to, you know, have, have functional ability in the end ranges of our hinges, like joints. Um, so we, we started there and then slowly just by building the trust, by, you know, letting go of that narrative, becoming more confident in, now in this case, uh, Nicholas's knees, abilities to withstand, you know, pressure. And then starting to believe in it. Now, whether that's placebo or fake it till you make it, I don't care because it worked. <laughs> okay, so so I'm not a doctor. I have no no medical experience or background in, in uh, uh, you know education, physiotherapy or, or anything like that. But I, I but I know what the body can can do and what it can't. Yeah, but you mentioned the, the trust thing, like yeah. the relationship between between the coach. I mean, in professional hockey. And in hockey in general, you want to do your best every day. You want to show that you should be on the team and you can't show any weaknesses, right? So you go about that every day. So so the space we are creating for the athletes is is a space beyond that. So not in the in the in the team, actual team, not with the parents, not in, with the school, but but a space where we can train these things, create the space that is okay to say, you know. Uh, work with these weaknesses so so you get comfortable getting uncomfortable you know so That's we can develop in that way yeah. so that was that was the the space that that uh, you created for me and thereby we when I was done playing that was the kind of the the fundamental thing yeah that that we are working then, then, with, with the young athletes and then once we created the, that that basis that foundation mm -hmm. we could start training Then we start loading. Uh, before that, it's like you can't really do anything. Uh, well, I would say he, he could do it. A lot of things, like a lot of you know, uh, I don't know, the Bulgarian split squat, goblin squat, chin ups, pull ups, all of that. And that's great. But 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 you have to have the forest gum thing on your knee uh, when you skate. So you can't do it. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be loading anything. So please get that weight out of your hands and uh, take this little elastic. <laughs> you should have seen this face. The rubber band. Oh, no, but I'm strong. No, you're not. <laughs> but you're not strong. Oh, yeah. And then he would like, just an example. He would like, no, but I'm strong. Then I would tap his knee, like just a small kick. like, And he would, oh, see, you're not strong. You're not strong at all. And then slowly I would keep doing that because I, I identified, okay, that's what he's scared of, his knee, right? Obviously. But, and then slowly over time, after six months, I would do it. And he would not even, you know, blink. And then I know, okay, now we've gotten somewhere. So, and just to think about that, I, I'm very stubborn, you know, I think, no, of course, many humans are no, that, and no, especially no. also hockey players, you know, no, so when new no. stuff come in, it's like, no. it was very, it, it sounds like I, I just, uh, I was, I got it uh, right away, but it, no. it took a very long time for me to let the guards down and actually let it in and think about like, okay, there is some something else here for me but it it took it took a while to to realize that okay it actually helps me i feel better in the body i feel better in my mind the the mental part of it was you know i think you need that as an as a human of course as an athlete okay this is actually helping me uh, before that uh, no uh, you need to feel it right Uh, with other things as well, of course. Yep. All right. So summarizing this a little bit. Yes, please. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking as you were talking here a lot about like getting out of the routine a little bit, just doing the yeah. same thing over and over again. That's great because you're going to get good at what you practice, but that may leave gaps, one. But number two, from the mental side, it's very boring and mentally draining And it's almost not stimulating. And as soon as you get out, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so it's becoming that, that, you know, comfort with the uncomfort 
yes. having that greater awareness of maybe this could help me. You know, like you do need to have some walls and boundaries. Like a person without boundaries is not a person, but being open as you are evaluating these things and figuring out, okay, how do I make sure I have a good foundation or I'm keeping it fresh, keeping it fun and stimulating so you can go through and do the work. Like that's a, it's an absolutely massive thing. Um, and the second piece that really came out of all of that for me was just making sure that we've got a safe space physically and mentally um, so we can show these weaknesses. We can be honest with ourselves. We can have that humbleness that allows us to grow, um, evolve, and strengthen ourselves uh, in general. So yes. those two things really stuck out for me. Um, would, would love to, to dive into um, a little piece of what you, you alluded to within all of that, yep. which is around thinking differently about training. It was less about, you know, how do we load up our squat rack to the maximum and really go after it versus what you call small muscles or like micro muscles, yes, uh, a lot of times around joints. Uh, so we'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, I can start with that. We have a lot of like uh, players and especially parents. I want my kids to be faster. Do you have any drills? Because they come to me because I have the hockey background. Do you have any drills on the ice? We can get faster. And I always say, yeah, of course I have, but you need to start with Nikolai. You need to start building the foundation to even, you know, uh, to get more uh, hip width, to get more open in the hips, with which Nikolai can tell more about. But, you know, the the thinking of that is the totally opposite way, right? And and that's what, what many doesn't understand. So, so for me, um, in my experience, and again, this is not scientifically proven, it's empirically proven. She would say, I do not know the sun rises tomorrow, but I'm 99% sure about it because I've experienced it for 48 years. In the same way, I'm not 100% like science fact-based sure that what we do works, but based on uh, martial art experience since I was eight, <laughs> like 40 years, I would say it does. Um, now, in order to build explosiveness, in order to actually identify where a person or an athlete is at at all, you need to see that athlete athlete in a totally free environment where there's no mental walls kind of holding that athlete's performance back. I can give an example. Uh, when you mix girls and boys in hockey, it's great, it's good. I have nothing against that. But when you start to see that the, the boys bully the girl, which happens. Um, you'll see the girls locking up physically because they're mentally cautious and, and you know, focused on receiving a boarding or, you know, something like that um, to not look, because women or girls, they, wanna, they, they, they don't want to look bad when they do stuff. They want to look like they know what they're doing. Whereas boys, they don't care. Shove them back down, they get back up, hey, right? So that's where we're different. So, so we had a girl where we told the parents, now we, we need to extract her, your, your, your girl, your kid, from this environment because she's holding back. We don't know what she can do. We, we can't range her triple A, double A, single A or whatever. We can't do that because we don't know what she, she's really capable of. And once we did that, she blossomed like within two weeks when she understood, okay, I'm not going to get any boardings. I'm not going to get shot from behind. I'm not going to get you know, uh, any of this stuff. And she kind of unfolded and had this very unique uh, way of skating where Nicholas, he immediately connected that to a hockey player from Sweden and said, that skate type of skating, that way of skating reminds me of this. And then the parents, we sent them YouTube videos of this uh, at a hockey athlete from Sweden. And she saw that and like, yeah, that's me. And now she's kind of like, develop explosiveness, speed, and power just through that without no extra training other than kind of relaxing mentally and actually seeing that her, what she's been like semi-bullied with her funny way of skating is actually not, she's not alone. And that gave her more confidence to put more power into every stride, into every skate. Uh, and thereby she became more explosive. She became more uh, fast. 
right? So, so that is just one example of how office, in our understanding, is everything that contributes to minimizing risk of injury on the ice and increases and optimizes performance on the ice. That is off ice for us. There's many, we have experienced many who, it's just a new word for strength training. Mm. It is, it is, it is. Within that. But it's also many, many, many other things because again, what is the root of the word? That is interesting for me, off ice, yeah. But then it doesn't, if you look up off ice, it doesn't say in the dictionary, you know, strength training. No, it doesn't. So, so how do we define it? So we go back and say, okay, who's the best? That's Canada and the uh, US. Yes. Sorry, it's the US and Canada uh, in that order. So, so, so <laughs> we dug down and contacted Hockey uh, Canada and USA Hockey uh, and then got uh, off ice manuals. And there, lo and behold, it's like this whole range of stuff, including yoga, including uh, Pilates, including like core training, including the micro muscles, including having fun, having fun. <laughs> the fundamentals was actually written with caps, fun, and then mentals in the uh, lower caps. And we were like, it's right there. Danish Hockey Union, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, I, I would actually love to, to dive into the story about uh, going to the gym with, with you two guys yeah. early on where uh, Nicholas was wanting to go pick up the big weights and you, you humbled him with some one pounders. Yes. Like that That's a good story. We should share that. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty, you know, uh, defensive and actually no. one of that was was that yeah the first time going to the gym and and yeah just in the beginning of of, of meeting in Nikolai the, in the and, Swedish club like it's yeah, a tier it, three like yeah. a tier one le uh, league right yeah, it was the in a, NHL KHL SHL at this point yeah, yeah. it was in Oscar Sam at that yeah. point and then we almost got in a fight mm. you know because he was he was showing me all these things that I couldn't do and he was just doing it so easy. And, you know, I thought I, I could do those things, but when I couldn't, I, I really got, you know, annoyed and mm. he was poking my weaknesses all the time, you mm. know, like in a game, for example, if you're in front of the net and I'm the forward and the D, you know, he, he poked my weaknesses all the time and I maybe take a penalty on him and helping his team, you know, so that was kind of the same. I was in, in your slot. <laughs> uh, my low slot. Yeah, yeah and, you know constantly get annoyed and he and actually yeah he he looked me in the eye and and he said if you don't want to train with me it's okay i'm just gonna head out the door and i was like no 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 please teach please teach <laughs> so so what happened was everybody were doing like heavy heavy dumbbells chest presses and this and that it was upper body day and an upper body day in swedish hoggy means chest and uh, traps that's it but up my upper body consists of uh, anterior core posterior core uh, thoracic uh, spine uh, you know uh, lower back uh, even 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 the glutes are, are upper body because they're kind of connected to the lower body right uh, so the hip flexor is also upper body for a martial artist uh, in fact the toes are also upper body for a martial artist we don't break down the body See, those were, yeah, is there anything upper the, and lower there i feel like yeah, it's those were the <laughs> things that he was constantly telling me i was like no camp no 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 that's not how we do it here leave me alone so <laughs> i was looking at how he was chest pressing you know i'm like dude you're like you're like i don't know back lower spine bicep pressing like you're not using your chest at all it's only getting big because you have loaded so much weight on it that you affected the pegs as well, but you're not using the pegs at all. Anyway, he didn't get that. So I said, okay, come here. So I gave him a one pound uh, dumbbell, like two, and we did some shoulder, it's called uh, function raised conditioning, uh, control lateral rotation, FRC cars. It's basically just rotations in end range holes, um, you know, um, with the shoulders. So you do not want to load that with weight. No, actually, it's right. Sorry, my, 
my bad. I said, grab a couple of weights and come here. We're going to do shoulders, shoulder stuff. And he came back with like eight pounders. I'm like, eight pound. Okay. If you believe you can do that. So I took the one pounders and I did it. And he took the eight pounders and he go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I said, okay, so take these. And that was in front of all the big bearded, you know, big chested, big bicep. Uh, I was doing it with one pound. Like. <laughs> but then I said, now if you apply some breathing, breath work, which is also a key factor in, in explosiveness, in speed. Because it's great, you're explosive. Wow, your first three, you're, you're, you're boom, you're there. It takes some juice on but, but then can you keep it going while you hold that breath of yours? How, 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 how long distance can you skate? And how many, how many seconds can you skate without taking a breath? You know, so, so off ice is also breath, breath work for, for me. So then when we applied the breath work, you know, ex exhaling on the eccentric, inhaling on concentric, uh, and then isometric holes that are sort of like uh, put in intervals in the movement. You can see the sweat starting to come in. You can see like the, the main arteries starting to pump, becoming slowly purple, yeah? Like, Good, now if we do some core control, maintain core control, what is that, yeah? So I hit him in the stomach, like, ooh, that's called control. Now, now, now you're, <laughs> not hit, like just tap, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tap in your kind of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> that, now, now, yeah, now. but, but there's, there's an element to that, right? Like it's, you've got to shock the, the athlete or that person a little bit um, yeah. that helps get their attention, right? Because yes. Nicholas, you were talking about how you've got these blinders and if one, you're not already open to, to new ideas, you may be a little bit open, but you're not completely open yet. You know, you've got to show the athlete a little bit of failure um, as a way of like, hey, there's room to go here. Um, there's more, not just, you know, having success and doing heavy weights or whatever that looks like for that person and athlete, but having that shock to actually put them into failure, which then helps build trust. It exactly. also shows that athlete, hey, you've got room to improve here. Um, yeah. and, and being able to take those blinders down because too many times people are like racehorses. And, and we yes. really shouldn't be that, right? It's getting out of that comfort zone, being more aware of our surroundings, possibilities, how things interact and play with each other. So I think that, I mean, we've talked about it in a few different ways, but it's an important element uh, for players, coaches, parents to understand is about that like shock factor and its importance yes. in the relationship yes. and improvement. I just want to quickly like this disclaimer. Uh, I do not hit athletes. <laughs> <laughs> that hard? I'm, I'm just because like, Nicholas was like, hey, you can't do that. I said, excuse me? You want me to find your best hits, Nicholas Hart, on YouTube? I can't do what? Just because your skates are off? Come on. Nobody's hockey. It's, it's okay. So it's okay when it's on ice and there's a referee, but when it's just two of us, it's not okay. Did I do anything illegal? <laughs> you know, I'm not a criminal. I just want to put that disclaimer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're gonna send you to the box, Nikolai. You know, you gotta take two minutes off and come back after. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, so that's wonderful. So, if you guys have anything to follow up on that, uh, please step in. Otherwise, I would love to um, just op you know talk about how you operate uh, your training center, how yes. you go about managing players um, that may not be you know direct like they they hire you, but they're still mm -hmm. playing for their clubs and, and the uh, potential. Uh, issues that that can cause but how do you manage across those so feel free to add otherwise we'd love to to drive into that yeah sure uh, well yeah just uh, to add on the on the weaknesses part like uh, for the hockey players to to understand so when i played my strength was the shot uh, had a good shot and and the one on one part you know it wasn't really my my best thing so i always tell the athletes that I was shooting a lot after, and you know, it, it was fun. But when it comes to the game, I didn't want to put myself in the one on one situations. And I didn't practice it, right? But after this understanding, like we just talked about, I would train my weaknesses more on the ice, and therefore I, I would, com would be more comfortable doing it in the games in terms of, of hockey, right? So 
So uh, just to put it in hockey terms. Mm. And in, in terms of the the the, the I would say the, the player, the individual player. Now <clears throat> with our youth academy, which is building, like it's 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 work in progress. Um, um, it's it the, the families are, are key, a key to success because if they're comfortable, that they understand what they're doing. Um, and of, of course, also the result on the on the players. You know, like we have one one uh, family that says that's actually uh, one of the guys who's with us here in Columbus, William. That uh, he 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 can go in one mood to training, and after the training, he's just transformed. Um, so of course that helps. Uh, but but they're they're the families that they understand what we're doing that they get us as human beings they might not agree with our how to say it way of doing stuff or you know they might be of a different set of shall we say uh, uh, approaches to life but our values we have to find our values like five core values that drive our uh, academy so so we we connect there and in terms of the elite players that are professional uh we 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 go to the clubs we visit we do player visits in the clubs we we seek out the coaches and meet them and explain what we do now most of the coaches know Nicholas um uh, and and he has a really good rep in the hockey world I'm building mine um so so but but once they meet us and I when when it's like we do player visits on ice and off ice and we don't go together because then it becomes like We like to keep that separate because the off ice is again everything minimizes risk of injury, optimizes performance on ice, and the on ice part is also value driven, but drill and skill in terms of developing. Now I'm asking, answering for you, but developing on ice weaknesses and drilling on ice strengths, whereas the off ice is more what happens in your home. I go to the players. I open their fridges, and uh, they may come home after a training, and uh, then they will have to go shopping because there's no more stuff in the fridge and cupboards. Because it's uh, I know a guy who wants to that. Yeah, <laughs> because it's uh, actually uh, increasing the risk of injury and reducing your uh, performance on ice, whatever you have in your fridges, and that could also be uh, sleep habits. Uh, recovery cycles like what do you do for recovery do you tiktok youtube uh counter strike or whatever it's called or do you actually you know do hot cold therapy with a bag of beans on your knees and you know uh like a foot spa to increase circulation in your lower body <laughs> not the upper body the stuff there it stops at the hinges doesn't go up no 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 Do you do stretching? Do you do you know? Uh, do you warm up your joints before you go out in life, or do you just warm up before you go onto the ice? Um, and once the coaches understand this, they actually ask the athlete when are they coming back. Um, and we have we had a coach uh, who would message me on and off, um, and you know say, okay, I told this player this today, and uh, can you work on that with him? In your training, uh, I would like him to develop this and this and this. Uh, now that was a one-off thing, but 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 that was a, a, that that's awesome when the coaches get what we're doing, and that we are here to plug in. We're not here to you know uh, change what they're doing. We're here to to plug into the existing system um, and the existing strength conditioning approach um, by training the things they're not training, and and actually extracting what the coaches want out of the players because most often hockey coaches are not very clear in the communication. They say explosiveness. That's great. What type of explosiveness? There are many. You know, is it more explosive in terms of angry, quicker? Is it more explosive in terms of uh, standing up for, for another guy on the ice uh, quicker? Is it explosive on the first three? Is it explosive... Uh, Reverse skating or forward skating is it explosive? Uh, you know, out of the box in a, uh, in a, into the shifts, out of the shift. What type of explosiveness are we talking about? Just to get back to to what you were saying uh, with the with the what are you doing off the ice, right? So everything is training for us. 
It's not like you have to, yeah, you have to train all the time, but it could also be a movie. It could also yeah. be eat what you want that day, you know? So it, it, it can sound a lot like robotic and, and it is in, 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 in many, many ways, but it, it's about enjoying too. And we all know that it is robotic. The, yeah. The robot is just called human. Yes, exactly. And, and it is all about enjoying life because when you do what you are supposed to, if you do what you think and say, you'll be happier. So yes. when you have done yes. all the things that know makes you feel good, you'll enjoy more. So yeah. that's kind of... It's basically based yeah. on an ancient principle. Uh, it's only a, like three, four, five thousand year old principle. Nothing, nothing, nothing dramatic. Um, what your thoughts, they become words. What your words, they become actions. What your actions, they become habits. What your habits, they become your character. What your character, but that is your destiny. So, so if you take that, <laughs> there's a lot of training to do, yes? <laughs> yes. So do you guys have a physical location? Like, hey, we're based out of this. Everyone comes to us. Do you have multiple? What, what does this look like for players to work with you? Are they coming to a central location? Are you going to them? Are you going to clubs? Are you hired by clubs, hired by players? Just uh, All of just get an idea. <laughs> So yeah. Simplify a, it down for us here. Yeah. yeah, we have a physical location in the parking. Uh, yeah, basement. where everything starts in the parking basement, parking lot space in the in the Nikki's uh, apartment block. We have a we have two parking lots that is devoted for this. While we are in the process of uh, negotiating a, a real facility uh, in Sweden, south of Sweden, which is. I don't, we don't want to jinx it to the universe, you know, so, so we're in the process of negotiating with this location or multiple locations. So we are aiming for a physical place um, that can happen in a week when we are back or in a month or in a year. We don't know. Uh, so so that, that's that. Then we utilize uh, what we all learned during the, the lockdown, the, the COVID period. Zoom, what's up? Uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, uh, which is mainly uh, link-driven, private link-driven, uh, but you are welcome to su subscribe. RawNations.com YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a little bit of self-promotion. Yeah, and Absolutely. then... Hey, I, I've, hey, the new Hockey IQ newsletter is the best thing you can subscribe to. I'll do it too. <laughs> yeah, and, and then we rent ice in different rings, both yes. in Denmark and Sweden, and, and the online trainings, like is very good because the athletes have a schedule with school with their own practices. So we are we are we are we are, well, look, we are very um, how do you say it flexible in terms of times, yeah. right? So so we can fit it in after a practice, before a practice, and we always start asking with the schedule. Are you going for practice? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we do this kind. So of course we have the programs, but it's very live. You know, it's very organic. So after a game. We have to come down so they can sleep better, for example. So, so that's the mm. that's the, the the biggest strength of raw yeah. is is plugging in like like Nicola said before to whatever program the athlete have. It's not like now you train with us for uh, three months. Yeah, we're gonna go through this, this, and this. No, that's not the reality of life. And, and that's <laughs> actually that's actually something because uh, there are two families here, with three kids with us, and and they are like uh, they they're, they're sharp. Okay, that 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 they are the sharpest tools in the shed. Okay, um, and and they're challenging us a lot over here uh, in terms of because we have just grown organically, uh, or actually it was a conscious choice. But we are there now where okay, can this become a business? Yes, we have, we have, we've made money. Yeah, we we've, we've lived, uh, you know, um, but but um, can this become a business? And they're challenging us a lot, uh, which is great. Uh, so I, I, I want to be honest, actually, and say that what it has been up to now is we, have, we do camps. Like people hire us in for camps. Uh, players hire us in. We go to the players. Uh, but we can see that that is not a sustainable business model because we don't have time enough uh, to, to pursue this. And also, we can't copy us and we are the product. 
Um, so so that, that is the, the major, 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 uh, you know, riddle we have to solve uh, while we are here. Um, so so we, we, we currently are hired for, for the full season because we, we are very clear. We, this is not a, like a fitness program or a strength conditioning program in the sense that our coaching. Now, the training, I have developed uh, training programs one week, four weeks, eight weeks uh, that can be bought. And there are YouTube videos. So you click the video and then it comes with me. Uh, so that is, of course, taking some time. But this, this you can sort of just purchase uh, from us. The clubs can hire us in, and they do for a day or a week. Um, the players can, uh, you know, uh, call us pre-game, post-game. Uh, or we just have a weekly scheduled uh, online training and a monthly personal training, plus a monthly on ice, which is uh, theme-based. So that could be uh, the puck at the wall, getting it out from the wall. That could be uh, for checking. That could be like elements uh, of 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 ice hockey yeah. uh, theme based. So, so whatever, these are the ways yeah. you can train with us. Yeah, whatever we see that athletes. Needs. Or it could be you know you hire uh, us in. So specifically, uh, Nikki, you hire him in to to send some video of yourself, and then he'll go through it, uh, and then do some coaching. So you don't have to necessarily be part of the academy to train with us. But of course, if you're part of the academy, you get to go to the U.S. with us. All right. So you're you're clearly doing a lot here. Um, <laughs> you're, you're taking some time also to, to travel and to find yes. um, wisdom, answers, and many other things. So as you're traveling, you know, you're going to the States, you're, you're talking with Hockey Canada, USA Hockey, you know, like what, what are the things specifically that you're, you're guiding towards or what are you looking to gather as you're seeking things outside of your, your local area in Denmark and Southern Sweden? Yeah, that's easy. We, we found out last night. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> basically it started with what is the best in the world, NHL? So how can we reverse engineer that into a... Uh, Youth player, what steps do you need to take? I know it's different for for many, but what basically like how can you go about like going to the NHL and um, from say our, our youngest athlete is uh, seven. Okay, so from seven to NHL, what is the roadmap? And and there the Ohio AAA program is is uh, is a gift is a is a gift from the universe. Uh, I was introduced to Nick Petraclia on my last visit here with the Cleveland Monsters, uh, where I have a like a working relationship, like off the ice with Ben Eves, the strength conditioning coach there. Um, and um, who's a former line mate of Nikki's uh, from yoga in Finland. Anyway, um, so, so what we want to be, we want to be the go-to academy for the under 16, under 16U, 18U of uh, OBJ AAA. And that was uh, what Nick Petraclia and I uh, were talking about last night, that this is what we should be working on. Uh, so, so from that, creating NHL players through entering a AAA program that is training the way that the Columbus Blue Jackets are training. So that means the Cleveland Monsters are training in the same systems. And if we train the same systems on the ice, right? But have this human aspect that we develop the human being and through that, the, the athlete on the values that we know from Cleveland Monsters because we've spoken with them. We know from the Blue Jacks because we speak with them. We know from the AAA OBJ, OBJ because we work with them that we are on the same page on the human level. Then the hockey can be added on once they come. So keep on bringing players over uh, keep keep on, you know, uh, facilitating uh, development through weaknesses. Keep on working on the human being, uh, developing the athlete, and uh, you know, so so that's that's what we really want to do. Um, and also, of course, uh, in the, in the top tier, uh, other top tier clubs like in Finland uh, and and Sweden, of course, and and Danish clubs, but the end game is the Stanley Cup. 
Gotcha. All right. Well, I I, I got to ask here. Uh, anyone who's listened to this podcast knows I, I need to know specifics. You know what? What yes. did you learn last night? Yeah. What have you learned from the monsters? Good. You want to start? Yeah. Well, last night, uh, for example, with uh, with our young players like William here on, on the video and um, and Oscar uh, and Ludwig, of course, they both says, "Okay, this is the best experience I ever had." So when when they go back home. They have now gotten a little bit of a, a clue what it takes because it's different. So so now they, before they heard it, now they see it, they felt it, what it takes to be a AAA player, for example. So so that's, that's of course, we knew that, but when he said it to me, it got more real for me and for him, for example. That that was my kind of, kind of take on that. And then I just want to add to what Nikolai was saying. You know, if you want to play in the German league, that's what we aim for. Then we get the contacts going. If it's Sweden, if it's Norway, it doesn't matter. And and if you end up not being a professional, the things you have been going through with us, and like I, I know I talked to the coaches from the, the Ohio Blue Jackets yesterday, it's the same. We create great human beings that can take these parts with them in life, no matter what they're doing. And 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 that's what we clear with the athletes. What Where do you want to play? Many say NHL, some say SHL. All right, then we aim for that. So it doesn't matter where it is, where the bar is. Yeah. So 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 that's definitely something that that I learned not last night, but just to round mm -hmm. that off in terms of getting set for my answer, is that if you do not have the destination as well as the where you are currently, you cannot uh, get help in terms of getting there, right? So so. What I learned last night is that now I know where, where we're going. I, I honestly didn't know that before. Um, or we didn't know. Um, so I know what we're doing now is we, we, are, we, are, we are developing players for, for OBJ AAA. This is what we're doing. Uh, the 16U and the 18U. That, 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 that's it. That's what I learned. Mm -hmm. From the monsters, uh, I've learned that we're all human. I knew this. <laughs> but, but even the hockey gods are also human. <laughs> you know? So, so and, and, and as insecure, as nervous, as scared, as worried, and as excitable as me. And through breath work, like I thought I could come with all my knowledge of everything, but it's breath work that can, that has, that have, that we have been able to plug into them with. So teaching them breath work, how to breathe, something as, you know, fundamental, fundamental <laughs> as that, you know, uh, is actually what we can offer them while they can offer us a whole bunch of other stuff. I've also learned what we are not good at compared to American hockey and what we need to work on from a strength conditioning point of view. And now I mean strength conditioning. Um, um, because I can see how we are not competitive. If we were here a month or more, our athletes that we bring would get uh, challenged. And it's good for one day, a couple of hours. You you can sort of you know cover up, uh, but but we wouldn't be able to compete here physically uh, for for a longer period of time. Uh, now, in terms of, I also learned in terms of hockey IQ, like the Eagle stuff, we are more competitive in our part of the world. Our boys have a better Eagle eye view. Uh, but the thing is, the game is just too fast here. We have bigger arenas, right? The big ice surface. So our Eagle is, is like more the little ball, slow. <laughs> slow eagle <laughs> it's not so snappy uh, yeah yeah there's some benefits to those small uh sided games and small area play that uh right there yeah so so that's what i learned that if our academy on the side combine the, the strengths of u.s hockey uh, north american hockey and northern european hockey we actually have a more complete hockey system that can compete both uh, over here, but also at the at the international level, where the surface is bigger, right? The worlds, IIF, I, I, HF uh, worlds, and and Olympic 
uh, Olympic Games, right? So we, we are also patrons. We have talked a lot about the US, but, but we are doing this to develop Danish hockey players for Denmark because we are both expats and uh, we are very patriotic. Like we would stand and sing uh, the national song before a game uh, in Greece, uh, wherever, in India, where I've been, or in Sweden. We are proud. We are proud to be Danish. Uh, and we do know our national song, also the long one. Uh, so, so that's what we set out to de de develop Danish hockey players, to develop Danish hockey. And that has then expanded. And that is why we have gone from Raw Coaching, which was our original name, to Raw Nations. Um, yeah. yeah, and just to add on that as well, that's when we have been doing this approach. And I mean, we, we talk like, like this and we're challenging, challenging like the things that, that are, are being done already. So, mm -hmm. so some of the current programs, you know, and, and people, you know, have a hard time with that. You know, but the only thing we yeah, want, lucky people, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So to take in new ideas, which is not new, which is actually Asian and, and, and older, it's like, it's hard, right? Like, like I experienced myself, but the only thing we want is to help the next generation mm. of hockey humans. <laughs> hockey <laughs> humans. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. All right. So to summarize again, because, yes. uh, you know, I, I got a simple brain here. You got you to gotta help yeah, me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get, uh, we, we've learned that competitiveness is a, a great thing to aspire to. Yeah. Um, added to the program that that's number one. Um, another thing would be just around making sure that we're developing the human as a whole. Um, you know, and then and then kind of circling back to the the monsters, you, you mentioned yeah. you know what they're looking for. You could yeah. outline that for me in a simpler yes. terms. Yes. Uh, you know what what are the monsters looking for? Com consistent competitiveness, that ability, that skill, that ability, that that human trait. They're looking for a uh, holistic or a whole human being. They, 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 they are looking for, or they, are, they want to develop also, uh, like their end product, if they could ever have one with all the call-ups, um, would be a, a, a holistically trained, wholesome human hockey athlete that is consistently competing uh, and every day getting better. All right. I love this. I'm, I'm wondering where the line gets drawn at some point. Cause yes. uh, Carl Lewis had a great thing. He's like, I always went 85% and he was a world champion. And he's like, 85% yes. yeah, was perfect for me because yeah. if I went to a hundred percent, I was too tense. Yes. So it's like being competitive. Like I think of like Nick Robertson of mm -hmm. uh, Toronto, the, the Leafs, like when he was, an OHL player, like he was just an absolute hound dog on everything, but he was trying almost too hard where it limited his upside when he got to a, a level where people could skate as fast as he could. Um, you know, where everyone's a great athlete in the NHL and AHL where you're like trying too hard or being overly competitive per yeah. se in the physical realm was actually hampering his performance overall as he struggled to think of it more, uh, cerebral and, and you know using his brain yes. a lot more to choose you know how do I apply this when do I apply it um, you know a lot of that's going to come with maturity but uh, I, I'm curious how that that's going to swing because I've, I've seen yes. both sides of this throughout these conversations I get to have this is, it's, yeah, it's curious. But, yeah I, I think it's a really really good uh, question or good things to, to talk about I would say uh, if I not wrong, asynchronicities. Mm -hmm. So, so what Nikola is hammering on the on the uh, the whole office part is asynchronicities. So, are you strong in the one side? You know, do you what do you do with the kind of the you can? Uh, if you are ability. lefty, you're strong in the right hip yes. flexor. If you are righty, you are strong in the left hip flexor and, it, and flexible in the other. Yes. So, and, it, and it goes with the balance of the mental state as well, like you were talking about. So the table have four legs, but if you are so strong in the tree, you'll still tilt a little bit, right? <laughs> so it, it goes with the body and the mental thing. If, you, if you're too, you know, too overexcited, it would, it's not good for you. 
Yes. So, That's so I, I would say balance in life also is, is a lot. So uh, we have we have two concepts in in martial art about uh, around that. One is that you you want to do seven. We didn't say seventy percent. Eighty five is fine. Let's say mm -hmm. seventy to eighty five percent of your capacity always. But you want to be a hundred percent in that. So you want to be hundred percent focused in your seventy percent output if that makes sense. And then we have another one, which is sort of the yin to that yang. Um, or, so yeah, is that life is 90% problems and 10% fun. Learn to have fun in the 90%. 10. No. All right, now, now we're, now we're talking about- in the 90%. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now we're having fun with life uh, lessons. I love it. <laughs> um, you know, the, the last piece I had for us, I think you guys kind of already answered, which is just around like designing um, ice sessions. I mean, it could be off ice and just, yeah. you know, how you go about theming it. So it could be wall work, uh, could have been four check, whatever the, the element is, you know, for me, I, I love to have a theme in my practice. You yeah. know, some, one of it could be just like picking pucks up off the wall. So just, you know, picking up rims. How do we do that? And how does that get yes. evolved into your entire ice session? So you're giving access to one, the wall pickup, but showing it in many different lights, whether it's a winger on a breakout, maybe it's a rim release to the point and just showcasing multiple ways that we can get pucks, get it off the wall. And I, and I think that's fantastic. So, um, you know, now, now we're off the reservation. All our formal yeah. topics we wanted to cover are, are done. Is there anything you guys want to add? Otherwise, I know we're coming up here on uh, time. So yeah, yeah, up. yeah. But for me, uh, it's just been awesome to to your patience and you know your your attentiveness uh, <laughs> is, is 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 inspiring uh, it is for me it's curiosity uh, always always speaking networking contacting connecting with new new the new um, and then also weaknesses like strength also as well right but Okay, now I know how how you need to be physically competitive here, over here. That that's very clear to me. So 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 that also means I know how you can be, you know, uh, strengthening your chances or optimizing your 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 performance coming over here from from our part of the world, right? Uh, which also means I now know very clearly the weaknesses from hockey athletes from Scandinavia. Or in hockey, at least from Scandinavia, which is why we now will go home and train a lot there, right? And then when I when we come back, when I come back, when we come back with more athletes, or the same athletes, hopefully the same, um, and more, we will see. Okay, where are we now? There will be new weaknesses that we then go back and hammer out. So that's the off ice part. The on ice, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 the same. Uh, like how how can I say it? I think you said it. It's, it's the same for me, you know. Uh, but but I mean, the focus level I've seen, you know, when the coaches is talking, mm -hmm. everyone is, you know, everyone wow. uh, want to do the right thing, of course. And maybe you're not athletically there yet, but you're still like, even though you're not putting the the pass on the tape, you're still the, your focus is to I want to do it. Mm. And you're in the line. You want to do like the the right thing. I mean, the kids in Scandinavia can can learn a lot from that. Mm -hmm. um, where it's it's the other way around. You you maybe you have all the the skills and you do the the sauce pass, and but your intensity is not there. I have right? a great example from yesterday. Our seven year old kid, Ludwig. Um, we agreed because before we we agreed uh, that you know. Okay, you're, there's gonna come a point where, where you're mentally like boiling, you're cooking. It's a pressure cooker, okay? Because you don't understand um, stuff, what is being said. But as long as you're the first one over when the coach whistles and pop on one knee, okay? And you just you just look at him, okay? Just look at him. You don't understand a word of what comes out of his mouth. You just do that and then stick into the, to the middle of the line and just do what you understand is being coached or shown to your, the best of your ability, okay? You do that, you're, you're competing, okay? So we had that, uh, we made that agreement and he did. 
And the coaches were like, they loved him. <laughs> and actually two of them didn't, didn't get that he didn't understand a word of what they were saying. And I didn't tell him this uh, yesterday, but I, I will tell it live now on air, um, that they actually thought he understood English because she was so fast. He was like, he looked at me, is it the whistle for the, and I said like, do, do, do. And he went, and popped one knee. And he was the first one or the second one. Yeah? And he just looked at the coach attentively. Uh, so for us, that is a huge thing to bring back. That is a weak spot in Scandinavian hockey attitude. Uh, that they need more martial art uh, attentiveness, which is what you have over here in North America. It's the respect of the sensei, the respect of the coach. You're not on first name with your coach. Your coach's name is coach. There is a separation between levels. There is a human hierarchy. And it's a it's a it's a it's a hierarchy that is stimulating competition without you know elbows uh, you know and stuff elbowing stuff yeah Where, without you know hit, hitting nicholas in the stomach saying he's not yeah, yeah, yes 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 yeah and then just, yes. just just to add on that like you know the respect you know they were they were thanking me i was just standing there i didn't really do anything thank you for your time you know, that kind of respect for, for your coaches, we can learn a lot from, um, I would say. And also, uh, like a, a yin and yang example, to round off uh, what the big difference is here, or the, the opposites are in terms of our hockey, Scandinavian and North American. Ludwig is used to being the best when he understands stuff, of course. He is, he is probably the best. In, um, and that, that's not because he's with us. That is... Even if he wasn't with us, I would say that. And William as well. Uh, that that family needs to make more kids. I hope they hear me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, he's used to people going over and talking to him or saying stuff when they don't like what he did. So yesterday, you had a lot of players uh, at the same age group coming over and talking to him. And I could see his reaction was like, he doesn't know yet. Now he knows that over here, you come and recognize greatness. You like greatness. You, you think it's awesome that somebody is good at something and did something well. Okay. But he doesn't. So I could see his reaction. Like, oh, oh, he just uh, turned his uh, body away from it because he thought he was being, uh, you know, pointed out that this is not the way we do here. And please become mediocre like the rest of us. Uh, don't be so good, you know. Whereas here, it is great, man. Good on you. Well done. Uh, so this is a big uh, yin and yang opposite sort of dy dynamic, dynamic between our cultures and something that I'm learning right now that we need to really carefully consider how we imbibe, uh, should we say, uh, a, a, a space or a place or a mental state that can, can cope with this coming from Scandinavia to here, since that's what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah, building people up is a, is a big thing. Uh, the, the old American saying that I know is uh, burning down your neighbor's house doesn't make yours look any better. Yeah, uh, you know, build, yeah. building people up tends to work a lot better, you know, a lot of more responsive to saying, oh, that was sweet. I really liked how you did that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what gets rewarded gets repeated. So, you know, when Boom. we're talking about great this, great that, it's probably going to happen over and over again. And, yeah. you know, for me, like, I think that's the way to coach, but. We could be here for another hour plus. Yes. <laughs> we'll come back, Greg. We'll, we'll come back. No, guys, really uh, appreciate your time. This is awesome. Glad that uh, you're in Ohio. I think that's a great story. Um, even for those people that just want to make that that email. Uh, I, I know you guys have reached out to, to Yarmo and Ben Eves, and that's what kind of connected you here uh, with the Blue Jackets and into Ohio and how you know the little tentacles end up spreading. And, um, you mm. know, just encouragement for people to, to challenge themselves to take that. Yes. Extra. I mean, it's just an email. What's the worst they can say? No, and you're in the same spot, anyways. Yeah. Uh, really cool. Yes, Noah, maybe. Come over. Yes, yeah. Noah, maybe. That's it. It just yet to, and I've said that a lot to add on what you guys are saying, but it all started with I was out of my comfort zone because Yarmo, when I played in Yogurit, he was the guy who took me there. And when I said that to Nicola, that Yarmo is the GM in the Columbus uh, two years ago, he said, Why don't you write him? Yeah, like, dude. And I was like, <laughs> I know him, of course, a little bit, but I know, no, I cannot. You can just ask, you know, and, and then after two weeks, I was... In the three weeks. Three, three weeks, all right. Three. I was typing and 
and he said, we, we asked, can, can we come? Can, can you help us, you know? And then he said, yeah, which camp do you want to attend? The development camp or the... Uh, uh, so it took three weeks, yeah. weeks to, to get out of the discomfort and actually hit the phone with his thumbs. And it took one hour to, for Yama to reply. <laughs> and that's why we're here right now, right? So, and that is a good, good, good. I, I don't think that's why we're here right now. I mean, it's why you're in Ohio, but, no, but it wasn't but for the good, other subscriber, example, even smaller Greg. world. That's a good example, Greg, on, on how careful you have to thread when you're dealing with weaknesses. Where, where, where you don't want to go shock and all. Yeah, sometimes. But, but also, like, constant small jabs will, will like water on a stone. Eventually that stone is going to be round and smooth. Okay. But if you just hammer on that weakness, you're just going to flood the stone and nobody can see it. You know, so, so this is kind of like, uh, this is a key principle. But once you have them, once you have them in motion, oh, then we are going, then we are for checking, back checking, and then we can get the pay checking. Wonderful. Well, thanks guys again for uh, joining us here on the Hockey IQ podcast. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes this week's episode. Thanks for joining us here at Hockey IQ. If you haven't already, take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop a review. If you want to be a great teammate, even recommend us to a friend. You can follow us at Hockey's Arsenal on Twitter and Instagram. Check out the website, Hockey'sArsenal.com, where you can subscribe to the weekly newsletter. You won't regret it. Catch a Buttes here next week for a brand new episode.